Hi, I'm Pastor Bill of Meet of the Word Ministries. Betrayal. Tomorrow I'm going to deal with the subject of traits of a betrayal. There are certain things that are clearly spelled out in the Word of God that not only forewarns us that in these last days as this tribulation comes that men will betray one another, Christians will betray one another, brother will betray brother, fathers will betray children and hate one another. And we're seeing some of those signs happening to, today and the Word of God lays out many of those very, very traits. I mean, there's no new thing under the sun. So tomorrow we'll deal with that. But today I want to talk specifically about the betrayal of the Lord Jesus Christ by the man Judas. Here was Judas, one who was trusted by the Lord Jesus Christ, was a familiar friend, uh, walked to church together. It was a very painful thing for Jesus to be be betrayed by someone that he had trusted. He had said, if it was one of my enemies, I could have bore it. I could have dealt with it. But for somebody so close to me to betray me, somebody so familiar with me to turn their back and, and deliver me up, well, that sin was so terrible that Jesus never even reached out to Judas after that. Satan, uh, while, while they were there having at the Last Supper, certain th traits began to develop in, in Judas's heart and mind that we'll look at tomorrow. And all of a sudden it says Satan entered into him. Now, a lot of people are confused by this because the scriptures very clearly tell of that betrayal. And it, because it tells of that betrayal, the people are, feel that it was God's will. And God ordained that this man Judas would betray the Lord. But that can't be the case because clearly Jesus said, truly the Son of Man now goeth up to be delivered to the chief council and chief priests and to, to the rulers. But he went on to say this, but woe unto that man that betrays me. Woe unto that man. It would be good if that man had never been born. So clearly Jesus was not justifying this man or suggesting in any way, shape, or form that, uh, that Judas was fulfilling the will of God. Now, that's the Calvinist mindset or the fatalist, uh, you know, Christians that have the fatalist perspective that just thinks that God has ordained everything from the foundation of the world, and it's really a misunderstanding. Now, I want to read from a, a, one of those that, that does believe that. Uh, he was referring to Judas here, and he, he had said that, you know, from Judas's perspective, he thought that he had chosen to follow Jesus, but from Christ's perspective, he, you know, he, Judas was chosen to follow. And he makes this comment. He says, it's the same paradox of human choice and divine sovereignty that is present in salvation. We come to Christ because we choose to believe, John chapter 6, verse 37 and 40, yet we are chosen before the foundation of the world by him, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. This is a paradox that is ultimately solved only in the mind of God. My friends, this is not a paradox, and God in his mind has already revealed to us where we're confused. When, when you, For instance, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, this man did not give you the entire text. It does talk about being chosen before the foundation of the world, but it also says chosen for what? It says very clearly, we were chosen before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blame or blemish and to be adopted children. In, in Romans chapter 8, it refers to us being predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ or God's own son. When God created the world, the first thing he did before the foundations of the world was say, let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image. We were, and when he made him, man was perfect. There was nothing wrong with man. That was God's predetermined decision. But when sin entered in, when Satan came in, when the deceiver began to, you know, develop the traits of sin inside of men, man was tainted, man was poisoned, man was polluted. Now, very clearly, the, the apostles understood this. In the very foundational preaching our first teaching sermon that is ever given in the New Testament. We see Peter giving it in, in Acts chapter 2. And as he stands up, he says, in referring to Jesus, who was delivered or made subject to two things. Now, this is found in Acts chapter 2, verse 23. You go and look at it because there are two separate things that he understands as he begins to give clarity to the church. And every one of my brothers and sisters who are Calvinist or fatalist or most of them that are in the Baptist circle need to listen carefully to the two different terms. There's two different terms that are involved. Number one, he says, him being delivered by the by the determinate counsel. That's the first thing. There are some things that God has predetermined or predestined to take place. Again, that we would be holy and without blemish or without sin and, uh, and to be ch his children. 
And so God is going to complete that work. That's what he's doing. That's his redemptive will. He's going to get that done. He's predetermined for you and I to be holy. Somehow or other, he's going to clean us up. Somehow or other, he's going to make things new. Somehow or other, he's going to get us through. But on that course, there's also something else that is recorded in the word of God. And that's the second thing that Peter mentions. He talks about the foreknowledge of God. Not only does God predetermine some things, but he also wrote some things in the prophets telling us what things were going to happen. When he was getting his plan fulfilled, he knew and knows that the enemy is going to come in no strange ways to him. There's no new thing under the sun. Satan's tactics we're not ignorant of, the, the scriptures say. He clearly tells us what they are. So those things that were written of, of Judas and his betrayal refers to what God knew was going to happen, not what God ordained to happen. God ordained you and I to be saved but and, and Jesus to pay our penalty, but he knew what Satan would do and what he would tempt other men to do, including betraying him. And that was fulfilled, even though he only knew it, didn't ordain it. You have a great day. God bless.